In this video, we'll discuss hemisection of the spinal cord, Brown Secret Syndrome, the tracts involved and the defects produced by the hemisection of the spinal cord. This hemisection divides the spinal cord into two equal parts, right and left. So what are the main tracts present on one side of the spinal cord that are involved in hemisection of the spinal cord? Three main tracts that are involved in hemisection of the spinal cord are the dorsal columns, the lateral corticospinal tract, and the lateral spinal thalamic tract. Two of the tracts are the ascending tracts, the dorsal column, and the lateral spinal thalamic tract and lateral corticospinal tract is the descending one. So which of these tract defects produce a ipsilateral defect and which of their defect produces contralateral defect. Lateral corticospinal tract and the dorsal column tract they run ipsilaterally at the spinal cord level. Lateral corticospinal tract that is starts from the motor cortex they decussate in the medulla in the pyramid and they cross over to the opposite side and then into the spinal cord. So in the spinal cord they run ipsilaterally. Whereas the dorsal column tract, they run from the spinal cord ipsilaterally, go up to the medulla in fasciculus cuneatus and fasciculus crassalis, and they decussate in nucleus cuneatus and nucleus cracellus from the lower part of the body and the lower limb. In the nucleus cuneatus, the fibers they run from the upper limb and upper half of the body. So they cross over in the medulla to go to the upper side. So they are ipsilateral in the spinal cord. So both these tracks, one ascending the dorsal column and the one descending the lateral corticospinal tract, both of them decussate in the medulla. Whereas compared to this, the lateral spinal thalamic tract cross over in the spinal cord, one or two level above the lesion and they run contralaterally. So a defect in lateral spinal thalamic tract which cross over in the spinal cord will produce defect on the opposite side of the body and a defect in the lateral corticospinal tract and the dorsal column tract will produce a defect on the same side of the body and also there is involvement of the anterior horn set of the spinal cord. So what are the effects produced due to damage to lateral corticospinal tract? It produces ipsilateral upper motor neuron type of dysfunction below the level of lesion and the upper motor neuron lesion produces spasticity, hypertonia, hyperreflexia and positive Babinski sign ipsilateral sign. Whereas the anterior horn cell involvement produces lower motor neuron type of defect which causes muscle atrophy, hypotonia and hyporeflexia on the same side of the body or ipsilaterally at the level of the lesion. The dorsal column damage produces ipsilateral defects and what sensation dorsal columns carry? Proprioception, light touch and vibration. Whereas the spinal thalamic tract damage will produce contralateral size sensory loss one or two level below the lesion. So the anterior horn cell defect is the only one which produces a defect at the level of lesion. Whereas lateral corticospinal tract, the dorsal column and the spinal thalamic damage produces a defect below the level of the lesion. A lesion of the cervical region also produces Horner syndrome ipsilaterally. So how to differentiate between the spinal cord lesion from the higher center hemiplegia? A spinal cord lesion does not produce a weakness of the face or cognitive and language disorder. In a spinal cord lesions, a horizontal line is the hallmark and defines the upper limit of the sensory motor and autonomic defects. So what's the upper limit of the sensory defects in spinal cord lesion? In sensory lesions there is hyperesthesia or hyperpathia at the upper limit of the horizontal line. In unilateral sensory lesions horizontal line is one or two segments below the level of the lesion. In bilateral lesion the horizontal line is at the level of the lesion. And what's the upper limit of the motor defect at the horizontal line. There is flexibility, atonia and areflexia involvement of the anterior horn cell. And what's the autonomic defect? Absent sweating below the level of the lesion.